What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. I can't do it, man. I can't do it. I just can't. I feel like I lost my power. I feel like I've lost my power, bro. I feel like Link. You ever play The Legend of Zelda? And you're in a fucking hard as fuck dungeon. And you got a half a fucking heart remaining. And there's not a fucking heart dropping from all the enemies that you kill. How many fucking green rupees do you fucking need, asshole? That's how I feel. That's how I feel. I feel weak and defeated. I feel lost and hopeless. I can't do it. I don't know if I can continue hosting this show. I've lost my power, bro. I feel like everybody watching an Eva Marie match on Tuesday Night Smackdown Live. I feel pathetic and nauseated. And I feel embarrassed and disappointed. I can't do it. I can't do it. My full, majestic, thick... Oh, it's gone. It's gone. The summer months drove me crazy, bro. They drove me crazy. It will be back one day. My glorious beard... ...is no more. I may have to step away... ...from off the script. I may have to go out there and find... ...someone... Who can fill in for me. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I can't do it. Host. Interim host, please. Take it away, bro. Take it away. What is... What's up, Travel Alert Nation? I'm your host, Killer Keemstar. Let's go right into whoa, the Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a fucking minute here, bro. Seriously. Did you guys honestly think I'd get fucking Keemstar, though it would be fucking hilarious, to host off the script? Come on, bro. Listen, let's do this the right way. First of all, hit my fucking music, bro. Bailey, where are you, you fucking goon? JD from New York, 206. It's Hopper off the script. Big Show and Ryback, Strowman and Roman. Get off my fucking TV and save me the misery. And all you fucking goons. Grab a cold beer, the man of the hour is finally here. J.D. from New York, 206, it's time for off the script. J.D. from New York, 206, it's time for off the script. Let's do this the right fucking way, man. What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. On the is a show where Keenstar is not allowed. Eva Marie, too. Because this is. The number one fucking podcast in your subscription boxes right here on YouTube.com. This 
is off the script. Episode 130, part number one, to start your fucking weekend off the right way, man. Thank you guys so much. Hope you, enjoy, uh, hope you enjoyed and droid. What the fuck am I, Matt Hardy? Yeah, where's my fucking Vanguard one, motherfucker? Jesus Christ. Thank you guys so much for joining me here on Off The Script. Hope you guys enjoyed that opening segment. Wanted to do something a little bit different because I know there's going to be, and yes, goon voice alert, I know there's going to be some fucking clown in the comments. Oh, JD, where's your beard, man? Where's your beard, man? It's gone, motherfucker. Thanks to the fucking heat of New York City. Sleepless nights. Can't fucking take it. I eat a slice of pizza. I got fucking crumbs in my beard. Feel like a fucking homeless idiot. Can't do it, bro. Couldn't do it. So, before Sub and Slam, it will be majestic and glorious once again. Thick, full. Listen, if, I, if there's one thing that I do very well, it's my facial hair grows in like less than a week. So it really doesn't fucking matter, man. The heat is really getting to me. It's fucking been absolutely killer. I don't know how you guys in Texas and Florida do it, man. It's Florida-like here for the last couple of days, and I can't fucking take it anymore. I'm, I'm honestly sweating bullets right now doing this fucking podcast. But whatever the case may be, man, thank you guys so much for joining me. I got a lot of shit to go over. Big story about WWE being unhappy with the fucking post-draft rosters of the WWE. What else is fucking new? We told you when it was happening that WWE was rush, rush, rush. What the fuck happened? Everybody was right as usual when it comes to WWE. Feels like they fucking penned the show in three minutes. Now they're unhappy with the fucking rosters. We could have told you that before the fucking draft was even announced. You fucking clowns. Anyway, we'll go over that. Apparently, Kevin Owens is rumored to be going to SmackDown. So we'll, we'll see what's going on with that, man. Big stories about WWE being unhappy with the rosters right now for both Raw and SmackDown. I got news on Sasha Banks. I got news on Joey Styles being released from the WWE, man. All that plus so much more on today's show and obviously all weekend long. If you guys want to show your appreciation for the show, man, pledge, donate, patreon.com slash JD from NY 206. The main thing right now is you guys get early access to pretty much anything that I do when I have the time to do it. Like this episode of Off the Script, it will be up early for Patreons and patrons for my Patreon, man. It's going to be fucking unbelievable. You guys get early access. And I've had many people come to me telling me, JD, I love the early access. Some of you guys work late. Some of you guys don't get to watch it as soon as it goes live, usually at 11 a.m. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You guys watch it. You know, as you're working your late shifts and, you know, as you're getting ready to go to sleep the night before, you guys absolutely love that, man. That's one of the big perks for being a Patreon. And t-shirts are just about to go out, man. The first, couple of, the first couple of ones from the top tier, man, they're about to go out. And, listen, speaking of t-shirts, that's patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you guys a bone right now. If you're not following me on Twitter, look at this fucking beauty that is coming to Barber Shop Window. That is the latest off the script design version number four of Get Off My TV Mirror Mirror on the Wall. Who is the worst? Of them all, Eva Marie, all read everything, get the fuck off my TV, man. Up for sale this weekend, I will let you guys know immediately when it goes on sale. Barber, shop, window, all you gotta do is go to the link that is provided in the description below, or if you're on the actual website, Go to barbershopwindow.com. You're going to see a drop-down tab that says wrestling t-shirts. Then you're going to see official partners. And then off the script is going to be right there, man. We are an official partner of Barbershop Window. Pro Wrestling Tees, One Hour Tees. The finest quality t-shirts when it comes to professional wrestling, man. I can't wait until I see you guys wearing that beauty, man. Thank you to Connor. That was his entire concept. I gave him, you know... 
the idea of Eva Marie. I was going to be okay with, you know, a same old get off my TV design that we've seen so far. But he took it to the absolute next level. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most pathetic of them all? Eva Marie, man. I can't wait for that shit to be released, man. It's going to be the biggest seller of get off my TV, man. I can't wait, man. So that is what's coming. Letting you guys know about that. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not done so already. I don't know what the fuck you're waiting for, bro. Seriously. Seriously. I'm an internet darling. So you might as well fucking subscribe right now. Do it. What are you waiting for? JD from NY206. My buddy's over at WrestleCrate, WrestleCrate.com, and on Twitter at WrestleCrates. Use the coupon code JD sent me. For an instant, 10% off. And WrestleRumble.com is coming back for the Summer Slam Pick'em. So if you guys want to make some fucking money, I'll let you, I'm going to let you guys know about information regarding that. Next weekend, Summer Slam Pick'em. Obviously, I'll be talking about that on Twitter as well. That's WrestleRumble.com. Let's get into the fucking news, man. Big stories. Enough of me fucking blabbing. Let's talk some WWE, man. WWE not happy with the rosters after the brand split. Roster changes expected soon. And Kevin Owens rumored to be heading to SmackDown. All this in one story. As SummerSlam approaches, there are even more WWE rumors coming out of the woodwork. And this latest one about Raw favorite Kevin Owens who just may be moving away from Monday night and going to Tuesday's SmackDown Live roster. The report is coming from Sports Kita, who claimed that this latest round of WWE rumors is coming due to the recent draft. This is the first time since 2011 that the WWE has had a draft, and even though many of the players are happy with where they were drafted to, Many more of them are having second thoughts about where they ended up. Kevin Owens is one of the few players who are wondering if being drafted to Monday Night Raw was a good thing for his career and if he may end up in a better position at SmackDown Live. The real reason that Owens will do better at SmackDown Live is because, quite frankly, the franchise needs a so-called heel and he certainly qualifies on more than one level. In addition... Randy Orton, another wrestler who plays the heel quite well, is also rumored to be moving to Monday Night Raw from SmackDown Live. So if either of these WWE rumors are true, this will certainly be most welcome news for the fans. And a lot of people have come to me, especially on Twitter, proclaiming that they were unhappy with the draft. And obviously, you know, I told you this was going to be the case coming out of that draft special, that first SmackDown Live special, and a lot of people were wondering why Kevin Owens and guys like Sami Zayn and Cesaro were not drafted to SmackDown because in the eyes of the WWE fans, they most associate with those guys getting a better chance on a brand that has been labeled a brand that's going to offer more opportunity. And that is what SmackDown pretty much said right from the beginning, right out of the gate, that SmackDown is going to be a brand to, pr to pretty much represent and present opportunity to those who might not have had it years ago or might not have it while being on Monday Night Raw. So definitely I agree with that. Kevin Owens, as far as I am concerned, would be better suited on SmackDown. Now, if you look at SmackDown's roster, and you look at the landscape of SmackDown, they honestly, and I'm taking into consideration here with John Cena being out, because John Cena right now is being rumored to be out for a couple of months, two, three months, as he films American Grit, his reality show for Fox. His rumors going around that he's going to miss Backlash, and I don't know why WWE would allow that, a three-hour network special, Special event, pay-per-view, whatever you want to call it. They're special events now. They're really not named pay-per-views. But either way you look at it, it's SmackDown's first exclusive event with their roster only. Having John Cena not be there 
speaks volumes. And I know you guys don't like John Cena. Some might like him, some might hate him, don't care for him at all. But I think we can all be on the same page here and agree that John Cena on a Backlash or a SmackDown show is better for the product and it's better for the brand. Because John Cena is and will be, until he steps away completely, the face of the WWE. I don't give a shit who they're building up on Monday Night Raw. I don't give a shit who they're positioning next in line to take John Cena's spot to be the face of the company. John Cena is and will be until he retires the face of the company. And to not have the face of the company at your first special event pay-per-view for your brand exclusively hurts. John Cena is a face. John Cena is a baby face. Dean Ambrose is a baby face. Outside of that, you got Dolph Ziggler. How long will it take before Dolph Ziggler gets stale and boring? There are already rumors of WWE turning Dolph Ziggler heel because he works better as a heel. And Ambrose has shown some heel-like tactics. Dolph Ziggler has shown some heel-like tactics in his match with Bray Wyatt a couple of weeks ago, or last week, I should say. And there's rumors about WWE turning him heel, and they, if they take Dolph Ziggler away, that makes two legit babyfaces on SmackDown. SmackDown is, right now, the way you look at it, in trouble. There's really no discrepancy with that entire roster up and down. You got two baby faces, the WWE Champion and John Cena. Dean Ambrose and John Cena. If you add Kevin Owens, you're adding another top-level heel, but you already have a top-level heel in Bray Wyatt. You have a top-level heel in AJ Styles. I think WWE really needs to think and sit down and strategize to even out SmackDown's roster because obviously with Monday Night Raw and the way that they're looking right now, and with the addition of the Cruiserweight title coming to Monday Night Raw and the Cruiserweight division, especially after what we've seen with Kota Ibushi and Cedric Alexander, which I'll talk about in this uh, this particular section of news, unfucking believable. WWE Raw is set up for three hours. They will be set up for three hours. They will be set up for success. Obviously, we haven't seen that lately because Monday Night Raw has been absolutely fucking atrocious the last couple of weeks. They went from fantastic to good to ap to absolutely downright awful this past week. Same thing with SmackDown. Monday Night Raw, I am okay with. They just need a more consistent booking and they need a, a more consistent show going forward. They have, the, they have the product, they have the talent, they have the tools to make that happen. SmackDown, I'm a little bit more concerned with. Yeah, SmackDown is two hours. Yeah, they have, uh, you know, they have some top-level names on that brand, but is it going to be enough to hold them through the remainder of the year while keeping it fresh and relevant and new and not get boring? Are the special events, these pay-per-views, the, these exclusive pay-per-views going to hold up? Are they going to be able to book three hours of television without making it water down, without having it drag out? I don't know. And this is what my concern is. I think it's going to take more than just Kevin Owens moving over to SmackDown. I, I really do. In fact, move Kevin Owens, Cesaro, and Sami Zayn over to SmackDown. I mean, Sami Zayn right now, the way I see it, he ain't doing anything when I'm on Monday Night Raw. I don't even think he has a fucking match for SummerSlam. How don't you have Sami Zayn, who is one of the best in-ring performers that you have on the main roster, not on SummerSlam? I mean, they haven't even, they haven't even tried to get this guy on the show on Monday night. But we got nothing but in-ring talking segment and promo after promo after promo. Titus O'Neil versus Darren Young again. And all that other bullshit, a fucking wedding in which Roman Reigns crashed it, went on for 15 fucking minutes. Another 15 minute segment, which was funny, with Jericho and Owens and Enzo and Cass, but all of that could have been consolidated and you could have put Sami Zayn on the show. At least they would have added another decent segment to the show. Sami Zayn, I, I enjoy seeing Sami Zayn in the ring, and the fact that you don't book this guy on a Monday Night Raw, or you don't even have, a, have him booked for SummerSlam right now, Speaks volumes. I don't even think Neville is booked for SummerSlam. Why don't you put those two in a random, friendly, one-on-one -on -one match? You know? But 
then again, if you're going to do that, it's going to be last minute. And is it even going to be worth it for Sami Zayn? Is it going to be worth it for the fans? He's just going to do it just to do it. In fact, the way I would have did it is I would have had Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens fight at SummerSlam and the loser leaves town. I've thrown this at you for weeks now, but WWE obviously went in a different direction. They got Owens teaming with Jericho against Enzo and Cass, which I don't mind, which I don't mind, but Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn, they build it at the last pay-per-view as their final confrontation ever. Did anybody believe that? No. Nobody believed that was going to be their last confrontation ever. They got fucking drafted to the same fucking brand. So obviously there was at least a thought about these guys going at it again. So why not do it at SummerSlam? Why didn't WWE book that for SummerSlam? At least it would have made sense. One of them could have left the brand. The brand is too, too big for both of these guys. You know? You can't have both of these guys on the same show. Loser leaves town. Other one goes to SmackDown. That's it. That's the way, that's the way I would have did it. But as far as the rosters go, WWE needs to sit down and strategize about how to even out SmackDown. Because right now, with the level of baby faces and heels, I don't know how it's going to work for SmackDown. With Monday Night Raw right now, I I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. They got the tools to make that show good, especially with the cruiserweights coming in. I, I don't see a problem WWE booking three hours of programming on Monday night. I'll be okay with that. SmackDown, I am a little bit more concerned with. So the reason that Owens will do better at SmackDown Live is because... Uh, they need a so-called heel. Now, in other WWE rumors, Kevin Owens was recently on a conference call with both national and international media. And he gave them some teasers about what to expect from the WWE, both Raw and SmackDown, for the remainder of 2016, as well as some voiced opinions about how he's being treated by the franchise. Wrestling Inc. brought us these details. Here's what they took away from this conference call. Even though he'd like to win the WWE Universal Championship, and I would like to see that if Finn Balor wins it. I mean, there's the door right there to reopen that feud as well. Owens versus Balor. But then you're going to have the fucking smart marks out there um, pretty much saying, listen, Balor and Owens, this is not going to draw. You know? This is not going to draw. Wrestling itself, in-ring action, the wrestling itself is not going to draw. The ratings prove it. No, the ratings have nothing to do with, ha with what's happening in the ring. The ratings are affected because the WWE product is fucking awful. It has absolutely nothing to do with what happens in the ring. There's no character development. There's no storyline development. Most of what we see on our television is a complete waste of fucking time. And if people, if viewers feel like their time is being wasted, they're going to waste their time watching something that they actually enjoy on a Monday night and a Tuesday night. The storytelling and the flow of the show has been absolutely fucking terrible. WWE creative and their, their creative direction and their lack of interesting storylines to keep people engaged week to week to week so that, it, so that you at least keep that audience happy coming back, and you don't see a drop in the ratings, is all due to WWE creative. It has absolutely nothing to do with what a Seth Rollins or a Kevin Owens or a Sami Zayn or a Finn Balor does in the ring. Because I know if I'm flipping the fucking channel and I'm seeing Sami Zayn and Finn Balor go at it and they're 20 minutes in and they're fucking giving you everything they got and they got the crowd standing on their feet, why would I change the fucking channel? Doesn't make any sense to me, bro. Doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. This all falls on the lap of WWE creative. Simple. He said he'd love to win the Universal Championship. He does not foresee himself facing Zam Sami Zayn in the ring in the immediate future. Moreover, when it comes to Sami Zayn, he's more interested in that being memorable and having a memorable fight than he is about the outcome of that fight in general because they know any given night they can steal the fucking show. And they've shown it and they've done it in the past. Finally, even though he didn't set out to win the Intercontinental Championship after only a few months in the company, that's just the way the cookie crumbled, is what he said. Kevin Owens is extremely upset that he has not been able to headline a pay-per-view event as of right now. 
Apparently his previous comment of I've only been with the company a few months is notwithstanding, but he plans to main event at some point this year or is at least trying to aim for that. Will Vince McMahon give him that opportunity? That remains to be seen. But if Finn Balor wins the WWE Universal Championship, the door is open, like I said, for a Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, uh, pretty much reu re re reunion. That's the right word. A reunion uh, of sorts to get that feud back up and running like we've seen in NXT. Finally, he was asked about the announcer's table being moved from the top, uh, or, or at least from the, the, the ringside area to the top of the stage. On Monday Night Raw, Owens, always good for a quote. He said that he'll just have to yell louder. Cage Side Seats is also reporting other various rumors, and they were the ones, uh, pretty much, who have been confirming some of these so-called rumors the last couple of weeks about a roster reshuffle. According to them, it's the so-called powers that be in the organization that are reconsidering the lineups and WWE Creative will ultimately be making the final decision. The final deletion, I should say. <laughs> Matt Hardy's a fucking beast. Other WWE rumors that are still awaiting confirmation, just to throw this out there, or denial, are as follows. Daniel Bryan appeared on this week's Monday Night Raw because of the show uh, getting crushed in the ratings by the Olympics. Who gives a fuck about the Olympics? I certainly don't. There's no word as to whether his appearance actually helped the ratings or that he'll appear on Monday Night Raw again. Earlier reports about UFC fighter Conor McGregor joining the WWE lineup were true. There's just one problem. When McGregor tackled the whole WWE in his infamous Twice on Sundays tweet and the NC-17 rated statement to the press about WWE being a bunch of pussies, he actually killed two minor angles that the WWE was hoping to explore with him. I don't know whether that was a thing that was agreed upon by WWE and UFC due to the Brock Lesnar deal for UFC 200. That remains to be seen. Not really sure on that. So basically, McGregor's WWE career was over before it even got started. Fans who were waiting for Roderick Strong to make his appearance in the WWE will be pleased to know that he passed all his medical tests and that he will begin in NXT in September. According to Daily Wrestling News, uh... They're another outlet that reported this news about the rosters being shuffled around. There's quite a bit of second guessing now over the draft and the picks that were made. It was speculated that Kevin Owens could end up going to SmackDown. This is according to Wrestling uh, Daily Wrestling News. While Randy Orton gets moved to Monday Night Raw, this would be worse for the blue brand at the end of the day, according to them, as losing Orton gaining Owens may seem nice, but it would hurt to lose a top star for an up-and-coming star. The only way this could be done was via trade, and Owens is certainly not going to want to end up on SmackDown due to his history with Shane McMahon, per storyline, the commissioner of that brand, which might offer us a new, fresh, and exciting storyline that WWE could visit. With Orton also being a star for the brand, it would be idiotic to do a one-for-one -one trade with Orton and Owens just switching brands. The best thing WWE could do is have Alberto Del Rio and Randy Orton go to Raw for Cesaro and Kevin Owens, and a random star from the red brand like Darren Young could go to SmackDown as well. WWE would allow for two major current stars to leave and solve a couple of problems at the same time. Alberto Del Rio is possibly leaving WWE when his contract is up in October, but he may stick around if a favor is done for him. As we all know, Del Rio was drafted to SmackDown while his girlfriend, Paige, ended up being drafted to Raw. Both were said to be upset about their separation, but management did this because they thought the couple had split due to Paige removing pictures of her and Del Rio from her Instagram page. One would only assume if the pictures documenting this relationship were removed, then the couple, the couple would have pretty much split. A couple of days later, the pictures were restored, but this didn't give WWE enough time to shuffle their roster decisions around. Paige brushed this off as basically a tech issue, which makes no fucking sense. The only way you could delete a picture is if you physically go to your pictures, hit the little X in the top right corner of the screen, and manually delete. Delete! 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 Every time I hear delete, I gotta say that now. Why would the only pictures of Del Rio be removed? WWE could easily just have Paige go to the blue brand 
There is more of a need for her to be on Raw to help with the women's division there, at least for the time being. If Del Rio went to SmackDown via trade, WWE or Raw via... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm getting the fucking brands mixed up here. If Del Rio went in to Monday Night Raw via trade, WWE could get a good mid-card heel character who might stick around if only for his girlfriend which might be all the incentive he needs. Plus, the red brand gets Orton, who could be an essential help to get them a great main event-worthy veteran. Meanwhile, SmackDown Live gets three great wrestlers, with two possibly being in the prime of their careers. Meanwhile, Darren Young is an up-and-coming character as well and could, could improve to be a top mid-card worker while on SmackDown. Both brands win with this deal, or this proposed deal, this rumored deal, and it would surely even out the rosters a lot. Well, of course, none of this is concrete. We know WWE wants to sh uh, shift things around and shuffle things around, and it would be smart of them to consider solving a few problems while doing all of this. Kevin Owens, I think, would be great for SmackDown. Randy Orton, you know, WWE right now has SmackDown and Randy Orton, and Randy Orton's a face. He doesn't work as a face. I'm sorry. Randy Orton just doesn't work as a face. If you move him over to Monday Night Raw and you make him a heel, yeah, you know I mean, it, it offers a little bit more for the viewer for Randy Orton if he goes, if he goes over there via a, a trade or something and becomes a heel. I would love to see a Finn Balor versus Randy Orton heel versus face dynamic. I mean, we have a potential, and there's rumors going around, don't quote me on this, that after SummerSlam, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton will be feuding. Randy Orton obviously being the face, Bray Wyatt being the heel. But I think Randy Orton as a heel just offers more to his character. Uh, you know, he's, he, he's a fucking viper. He's unpredictable. And all of that blended into what he's been known to do in the past just makes Randy Orton a better heel than a babyface. And I think it's going to offer more for Monday Night Raw if Randy Orton goes in to that brand as a heel. Finn Balor, a Sami Zayn feud with, uh, with Randy Orton would be fucking fantastic. You know, with Roman Reigns being in the mid-card, this actually opens up a lot of potential for, for feuds as well. You know, Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns, I'd love, I'd love to see a dynamic between that. You know, Rusev and Sami Zayn... You got Reigns and Orton again, even though we've seen it already, but it would be under a different circumstance. Randy Orton and Sami Zayn. I mean, the mid-card for WWE could be, could be great on Monday Night Raw. It really could be great. And then you got Cesaro. You know, WWE, all I know in the end of this, needs to shuffle the rosters around and make SmackDown a little bit more, a little bit more viable as a threat to Monday Night Raw. Whether this means Kevin Owens and Cesaro going over there and Randy Orton and Del Rio going over to Monday Night Raw... Remains to be seen, man, but, you know, I think WWE at this point can legit take three guys, and I think three is the magic number here, take three guys and move them over to SmackDown, giving SmackDown three new superstars, you know, you move two from SmackDown over to Monday Night Raw, Monday Night Raw is on the cusp of getting the Cruiserweight division anyway, so they're not going to be harmed by this trade. As long as you're helping out SmackDown in the long run, I think this will be a good thing. It needs to be done. So that is what's going on right now. That's the talk of the town for WWE pretty much bolstering SmackDown via a trade of some sort uh, for their roster. To, to make SmackDown's roster a little bit more appealing. So let me know what you guys think about that. Who would you want to see move to SmackDown? Honestly, let me know who would you want to see move to SmackDown from Monday Night Raw. Speaking of the cruiserweights, Cedric Alexander, unfucking believable man with what he did with Kota Ibushi on the cruiserweight classic, the start of round two. We got two matches, two matches on Wednesday night, and these two matches were legit the best thing that WWE put on all fucking month. Honestly, Grand Metallic, I, I, I'm enjoying what he's bringing to the table. Tajiri, I hope he gets signed. He's 47 years old, I know. But if you if you sign him, he's got a couple more years left in the tank. He could be a beautiful addition to the Cruiserweight division. And he's fucking over with the crowd, man. I love the way he, he maneuvers in the ring. He's 47 years old. He does not look it at all. He does not move as if he's 47 years old. He still has a lot 
left to offer. And if you want to make the cruiserweight division a serious threat to to everybody, not only not only within your own product, but for the independents to take these guys and showcase these types of guys and pretty much make a statement in the wrestling world. I think having Tajiri and guys like Gren Metalik and Cedric Alexander, Kota Ibushi, it's going to do fucking wonders for WWE. But Cedric Alexander and Kota Ibushi, man, if you guys missed this, you need to go out and watch it. I, I mean, if there's one match, you need to go out and watch. I mean, if you don't even have the fucking network, sign up for it in August. You're going to get it for free. You can cancel at the end of the month, man. You got the Cruiserweight Classic. You got NXT TakeOver Back to Brooklyn. You got SummerSlam. Sign the fuck up for the WWE Network. If you don't like what you see, which I don't know why you would not after watching this fucking match, you can cancel at any time at the end of the month. But if you have not seen it and you don't have the network, I swear to God, go and do yourself a favor. I would never steal you wrong. Cedric Alexander and Kota Ibushi might have had the best match of 2016 in WWE. Unfucking believable Came to a point where Cedric Alexander lost. He received a standing ovation of thank you. Fucking, I don't know how many people fit in full sale. Five, six hundred people. Every fucking person in that arena on their feet chanting thank you to Cedric Alexander. Triple H came out because the crowd started chanting thank you and then please sign Cedric. Triple H comes out, grabs him by the neck and does that little head nod, and he, he waves to everybody and brings Cedric Alexander to the back. Cedric Alexander expected to sign with NXT after wonderful performance during the Cruiserweight Classic. It has been said before, and it'll be said yet again, if you aren't watching the Cruiserweight Classic every week, you're missing out on amazing in-ring wrestling. Last week, Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa had a match that the WWE Universe has been talking about all week. But Cedric Alexander and Kota Ibushi weren't to be denied their week in the sun. During, last, uh, during the last episode of the Cruiserweight Classic, the start of round two, Alexander and Ibushi met in the second round of the tournament to decide who would be moving on to the quarterfinals. In a fantastic match with many impressive near falls, and two excellent performances by both men. Ibushi ended up getting the victory over Alexander after a Golden Star powerbomb, which is quickly becoming my favorite finisher in all of WWE, man. Every time I see him hit it, you just know it is over. However, Alexander received overwhelming praise from the crowd at Full Sail University, and it led to a moment where the game, Triple H, came out to reassure fans that Cedric Alexander's future in the WWE is indeed bright. There's some speculation about Triple H coming out to grab Alexander because he was wasting time and needed to come to the back quickly. But it's undeniable that Cedric Alexander accomplished something big that night and will be in the WWE. If this guy is not signed from Monday Night Raw and the Cruiserweight division, it is going to be a criminal offense on WWE. Actually, everybody in the second round. Honestly, everybody. From what we've seen already, Grand Metallic, Tajiri, Kota Ibushi, and... Cedric Alexander. Then you got Rich Swan and Brian Kendrick. And you got TJ Perkins, who is one of my favorites. I hope to see more from Noam Dar in the Cruiserweight Classic. I think what I seen with Noam Dar wasn't really a good first impression because he went against one of the, uh, one of the Bollywood boys, which I, I didn't like any of those two guys. I didn't like their gimmick. I don't like the way they presented themselves. I think it was just that alone that really turned me off. But I'm hearing a lot of great shit from Noam Dar, from you guys especially. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to the table, especially next week. I think he's going to be performing next week uh, against Brian Kendrick. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. Uh, you got Akira Tozawa. This entire second round, Jack Gallagher, Zack Sabre Jr. But I'm hearing Zack Sabre Jr. is not going to sign with WWE. Uh, he wants to finish up whatever he's doing uh, where he is right now and then potentially visit WWE in the future. But as far as the Cruiserweights, man, if they sign most of the second round, they will have probably the best division in all of the entire company. I am even reading news articles saying that the Cruiserweight Classic is outperforming NXT as far as most watched product on the WWE Network. Cruiserweight Classic is either, is either number one or two, and NXT is usually two or three. So, it's outperforming NXT, and NXT right now has had 
or has had a decent build towards Brooklyn. They've had very, very good build towards Brooklyn, man. You got Nakamura and Samoa Joe, which I am fucking absolutely looking forward to. More than anything during SummerSlam weekend. On top of that, you got Balor and fucking Rollins at SummerSlam. You got, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Asuka and Bayley for the Women's Championship of NXT. Gargano and Ciampa versus The Revival. You got Bobby Roode making his in-ring debut at NXT TakeOver. Ember Moon is debuting. So NXT is, again, hitting their strides, man. With all the fucking exodus of talent from NXT, they seem to be right where they should be. It's like they haven't lost a step. And they need to continue to replenish and rebuild NXT. Take over Brooklyn compared to last year, which was a phenomenal fucking pay-per-view special event. I think they're going to outdo themselves this year. I cannot wait for that tag team title match. I cannot wait to see Nakamura and Samoa Joe. I cannot wait to see Ember Moon. I've been watching Ember Moon all fucking week on YouTube, man. I'm fucking excited. She may legit be my new favorite woman in all of WWE. And I love me a Sasha Banks. And I love me an Asuka. And I love me a fucking... Becky Lynch. Eva Marie, not so much. Oh, I'm sorry, I mentioned the name. She who shall not be named. I apologize, it won't happen again. I think I mentioned it when I fucking unveiled the t-shirt. I gotta get used to that, man. She who shall not be named is what we will refer to her as. Miss Red. Fuck Miss Red. Big Red. I'd rather chew the gum than watch fucking Red on my television. Anyway, Cedric Alexander... Criminal fucking crime if WWE does not sign this man to be on Monday Night Raw each and every Monday. Um, I'm looking forward to the Cruiserweights on Monday Night Raw. You can position them to open the show at 8 o'clock, at 9 o'clock. You can have two Cruiserweight matches per week and make it competitive. Make it competitive, man. I can't wait. September is going to be a great fucking month for WWE. Hopefully, Monday Night Raw itself gets back on the right track so that we can be excited about the brand again because right now, I have absolutely no faith in what Monday Night Raw is delivering. Uh, according to some rumors, Vince McMahon has not even been on Monday Night Raw. I don't know what's going on. I believe he's turning 71 at the end of August, right after SummerSlam. I think August 24th is Vince McMahon's 71st birthday. Uh, he's not going to be on Monday Night Raw this week and next week. He's not going to be at SummerSlam. He wasn't on Monday Night Raw this past week and the week before that. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm hearing that he's still micromanaging via telephone. So who the fuck is really in charge of okaying these shows? That's what I would want to know. Why are these shows so fucking bad? Are the shows this bad because Vince McMahon is not there? There were rumors going around that Vince McMahon booked that Monday Night Raw, that first Monday Night Raw of the new era. It was all Vince McMahon. If Vince McMahon is going to book shows like that, I think we need Vince McMahon back. And we've been very hot and cold on Vince McMahon on, off the script. But if Vince McMahon is not there and the shows are suffering, I think it's better to say that we want Vince McMahon back behind the scenes at WWE. But that's just the rumor going around right now. I don't know how concrete that information is, but that's pretty much what I am reading right now. News on Sasha Banks. And I know all you fucking goons are heartbroken that Sasha Banks is off the fucking market. Backstage news on Sasha Banks' wedding not being mentioned by the WWE. Last week, it was reported that the current WWE Women's Champion Sasha Banks got married in a private ceremony, which broke the hearts of many goons around the world. The news came out of left field for a lot of the WWE Universe because the boss and her personal life has been kept mostly out of the limelight, which is different than a lot of WWE superstars have handled that part of their lives in the past. According to a report from CagesideSeats.com, there is a specific reason why WWE and Sasha Banks haven't commented or made her wedding any more public than a few posts on Instagram. Apparently, everyone involved is looking to stay clear of the drama that could develop from mixing the two radically different parts of her life together. In a nutshell, WWE does not want a repeat of what happened with Lana and Rusev's engagement and wedding that has forced them to acknowledge their love on WWE programming. The fact is that Lana and Rusev's situation occurred because they're both WWE performers and were so closely tied together before they even made their main roster debut. You know, well before that, in NXT. And Banks' personal life isn't as close to her persona on WWE television. This is true. Banks comes off as a legit boss, very cocky, very arrogant on WWE television. In real life, she's a fucking geek. And I love it. 
She's a gamer, you know? She is just very laid back and she doesn't resemble what she is on WWE television. But I don't think WWE has anything to worry about with Sasha Banks because, number one, she didn't marry a superstar. She married a seamster, someone who makes and designs the, the wrestler's wardrobes and outfits in WWE. I don't think WWE has to worry about Sasha Banks being very um, out there with her, her personal life because I think, honestly, the way she is, she gets it. I don't think WWE has to worry about that part of Sasha Banks at all. I mean, Lana and Rusev, to be, to be quite honest with you, I think Lana and Rusev, and I would not be surprised if this is the case, and, and you know, you can quote me on this if I'm wrong. I, th I honestly think they went into business for themselves. They went to TMZ, they announced their engagement, yeah, we're, we're set to be married, we love each other, this and that. Meanwhile, Lana was in a storyline with Dolph Ziggler after she had dumped Rusev and went with Ziggler. Started wearing jean sh skirts and jean jackets and fucking Dolph Ziggler didn't know whether he wanted to be a mix of Shawn Michaels or fucking Motley Crue, Tommy Lee. Jesus fucking Christ, what the fuck was going on with that shit? Honestly. So Lana and Rusev, I honestly think they went into business for themselves. Why, would, why wouldn't they? That, that storyline was fucking terrible. Absolutely terrible. It made no sense. Absolutely no sense. So obviously, they figured if we announce that we're married, and we show off the ring, maybe WWE will dump this fucking storyline. And that's exactly what they did. You know? And I don't think anybody was hurt from it. Goes to show you how stupid WWE is for splitting Lana and Rusev to begin with, and putting her with Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler doesn't need anybody. Dolph Ziggler could be a cocky prick on his own. He doesn't need a female accomplice to get that point across. Lana always needed Rusev. Rusev always needed Lana. It's a pairing that just makes sense. And if you split the two, they will suffer greatly on their own. And that's the way, that's the way it ended up being. And now that they're back together, you see Lana... And how she portrays herself on television, it works. It, it wasn't working when she was with Ziggler at all. And it wasn't working when she was by herself. Rusev needed somebody. It didn't work with Summer Rae, obviously. Rusev, not going to work on, on his own. Even though I, I, I'm, I'm fucking in love with his mic skills, man. He's absolutely fucking hilarious. Even when he doesn't mean, mean to be hilarious. He just comes off hilarious. So Rusev and Lana back together, they just work. I mean, it's a no-brainer. And you can see now that they're both successful together. Rusev is on the road to a dominant United States Championship reign. Uh, barring any fucking setbacks from Mr. Roman Reigns, wedding crasher. You know, I don't know what's happening with that. But I would not have Rusev lose the title to Roman Reigns. I understand WWE's mentality going into this is maybe if they portray Roman Reigns as the American hero. And the one that's... Fighting for America's cause against the villainous outsider, you know, who holds the United States Championship. The Bulgarian brute, Mr. Russia, right? Holding the United States Championship. And Roman Reigns is playing that American hero. They're hoping that more people side with Roman Reigns and get on his back and support him. I don't know if that's the case. I don't see any difference whatsoever. Some of you people, some goons out there think that Roman Reigns is getting more cheers than booze. I don't hear it. I hear the, the same amount of booze as I hear every other fucking week. And you think it's going to work in New York City? Absolutely fuck no. Rusev's going to be the face in this match. You think Roman Reigns is going to get fucking cheated because he's the American hero in New York City? Get the fuck out of here, bro. He's going to be eaten alive in Brooklyn. WWE. Listen, this is just another desperate failed attempt at Roman Reigns and getting him over. You know, New Yorkers aren't fucking stupid, bro. They'll see right through that fucking cloth. WWE trying to put the cloth over our face? Oh, they'll never know. They'll never know. Yeah, we'll know. We know already. Most of us smart individuals know already. But Lana and Rusev are going to be a face going into SummerSlam. Mark my words. Mark my words. If I'm wrong, if I see Roman getting any type of face reaction, I'll come on here and say, listen, I was wrong. The majority of the Barclays Center were cheering Roman Reigns, but I just don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. So Rusev cannot lose to Roman Reigns. They work. And as far as Sasha Banks, this fucking story is about Sasha Banks. I'm over here ranting about Rusev and Roman Reigns. 
But you guys get my point. I don't think WWE has anything to worry about Sasha Banks with. You know, her wedding is, is very private. It was very private. She didn't, ma she didn't marry a WWE superstar. So it's not like, uh, you know, someone's going to come out there and blab and ruin storylines and ruin what Sasha Banks is going on WWE television right now. So WWE doesn't have anything to worry about that. The simple fact that she is married is breaking the hearts of all those fucking goons out there who thought they legit had a shot with Sasha Banks. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. You wish. I wish. You wish. Everybody wishes, man. Fuck out of here. Anyway, man, finally, let's talk about this one here. I wanted to talk about this last week, and I did not. I saved it for this week. Tyler Breeze being repackaged and receiving a bigger push on SmackDown. Tyler Breeze was a big star in NXT. Very big. One of my favorites. Still was. Still is. But he was never rewarded for just how good he was for WWE's developmental system. NXT never gave him an NXT title run or even a fair crack at becoming the NXT champion. Shame on them. However, a lot of people would argue that got the better gig when he was brought to the main roster. Or that he got the better gig when he was brought to the main roster. Everybody hoped. Everybody wished. But he debuted on SmackDown and wasn't given a top spot or a fair chance to get over with the WWE Universe. All of that is about to change for Prince Pretty. Because of his recent run with Fandango as a tag team, they have opened eyes of WWE officials to give him a better chance on SmackDown after the brand's extension. There's another guy you could totally utilize as a top-level heel for the WWE Championship. Now, I, I would love to see Breezango under a different name, of course. That, name, that name's got to fucking go. Seriously. I, again, I don't know if I'm referencing Tyler Breeze and Fandango as a tag team, or I'm sitting, out, or I'm sitting down at fucking uh, some Cuban restaurant waiting to order a skirt steak and rice with a fucking fruity drink with a nice little umbrella and a fucking pineapple at the top. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. A mixed drink at the bar or a tag team in WWE? Still don't know. They need a new name. But Tyler Breeze, he could work as a tag team and he can work as a singles. Seriously. According to a report from DailyWrestlingNews.com, there is some discussion about giving Tyler Breeze a push after being repackaged. And those talks were happening before the WWE draft. It's possible that Breezango could be getting a repackaged as a whole. Not just Tyler Breeze. But it looks like Breeze is the one WWE officials are seeing as the one with more potential to become a bigger star on SmackDown. I'll be okay if these guys get a decent run in the tag team division and then you want to break away Tyler Breeze. But right now, SmackDown is in such a precarious position that the tag team division needs help because the Usos are out and they're lacking depth in that division as well. The mid-card and the entire card singles-wise on SmackDown is suffering. So Tyler Breeze can certainly be a massive boost to that as well. So they're really in a precarious position. I, Tyler Breeze can work in any role you give him. You want to put him with Breezango and give them a run as a tag team and make them serious? He could do it. They could do it. I don't want to see Breezango split up and then have, then, then have Fandango just floating in the middle of nowhere. Fandango could be, and I thought about this for him for quite a while. If they make Fandango serious, he can go. He can go in the ring and he could be a threat to the Intercontinental title as a heel. Tyler Breeze could be a threat as a heel for the WWE Championship. Or, as, or for the Intercontinental Championship, one or the other. It doesn't fucking matter. They could be a threat together as a tag team for the tag team titles. So this is a good thing for WWE to be. And they got two legit guys here that they could utilize on SmackDown. It just, you, you got to make the right decision about where they go. I don't think you could be wrong about where they go. If SmackDown truly is the brand for opportunity, why not give Tyler Breeze and Fondango the opportunity to shine? I would love to see them as a tag team succeed and then break away. But if you're going to make Tyler Breeze into a successful singles guy, which should have already been done, I'm not going to argue with you. But as long as you make Fandango, who is talented and legit in his own right, just as big as a star as Tyler Breeze for the mid-card, for the IC title. That's it. This is a good thing for WWE to be in. There's no, there's no negative here. They just got to play their cards right. You can't have one be more successful than the other. Both men are talented. Both men can offer a lot. And they've been both underutilized. Use them. It's not that difficult. At all. That's pretty much everything, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me. 
this week, guys. Unbelievable. More to come. Backstage heat on Sami Zayn heading into SummerSlam? For what? What the fuck did he do? The only thing logical here that I could think of is that potential injury that he could have caused himself in the last match he had with Kevin Owens. I don't know what backstage heat he could have. Sami Zayn. Joey Styles released controversial comments surface from... Joey Styles in a Facebook Q&A he did about the WWE, and he did mention Roman Reigns. Every time you mention Roman Reigns, it seems like something fucking bad's going to happen. Brock Lesnar, rumored to be heading towards the Universal Championship at the start of 2017. All that plus so much more on this weekend's Off The Script, guys. Thank you so much. If you guys missed my King of the Ring round one match with Dean Ambrose and Sami Zayn, Go check that out, man. Link is down in the description, and it's been in the video with an annotation, man. Go check that shit out. We also got Finn Balor versus Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens coming up this weekend to finish round one of my Road to WWE 2K17 King of the Ring tournament, man. If you guys want fucking full-fledged, all-out action, I guarantee you're gonna fucking enjoy this, man. Thank you guys so much. The Eva Marie... Oops, I said it again. She Who Shall Not Be Named t-shirt is coming out this weekend. Thank you to Connor again for designing such a, such a beast fucking shirt. Barbershopwindow.com. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, same thing. WrestleCrate.com. And on Twitter at WrestleCrates, use the coupon code JD sent me for an instant 10% off. Patreon.com if you guys want to pledge. Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. And WrestleRumble.com. Go to the website. Be up to date when the SummerSlam Pick'em goes live. Cash prizes for the second biggest pay-per-view of the calendar year in WWE. I'm JD. I'll be back on Saturday morning with part two. Until then, hit that thumbs up. And I'll see you guys right back here for Off the Script. Talk to you later.